This is gonna hurt. It's time, it's time for, the for the Suffering Podcast. Podcast. Salvation comes in the strangest of places. When you see no way out and hope is in short supply, gravitation towards the common comfort is the goal. We sink into a place of darkness because that's all we see and that's all we know. When the light starts to shine and we look back at the darkness, we wonder several things. How did we get from there to here? How did I ever think I was stuck in that place? Are there others where I once was? Everything once was thought to be impossible until it was first achieved. Once the threshold was passed and others follow the lead, they walked a road that was charted through a tough education. I'm Kevin Donaldson here with Mike Felace, and on this episode of The Suffering Podcast, we welcome our special guest, Wally Green, to discuss the suffering of a ping pong pro. Wally has taken this sport and really used it to get out of the darkness. Wally, thank you so much for coming all the way from New York City to join us. Hey, thank you for having me. Great to be here. <laughs> you know, Mike, I, I met Wally a little while ago, and he's he's been a godsend to me. Like, I, I sort of I, I look at his TikToks. And um, I'm, I'm in awe of how he does it. You know, I mean, <clears throat> well, we started. We, I still don't have TikTok. You didn't. Now all of a sudden, your TikTok's exploding, and it's because of Wally. Because he, he gave me the he gave me the formula. He gave me the secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> on a, I just is that was wrong. is that what was on the table? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that later. <laughs> Before we start anything, let's give a big shout out to our marquee sponsor. That's Toyota of Hackensack. We don't trust anybody, but we buy our cars from there because we trust them. So go to ToyotaHackensack.com. Let them find you a car. So, Wally, you're a city boy out in the suburbs here. You said you like to take adventures, so you're you're out here on an adventure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it was a good adventure, though. You know, I got to relax on the bus ride. Although, I I, I looked to the left of my uh, of me to look out the window, and on the chair was an open tampon. <laughs> Why oh. it was there, I have no idea. Oh, not a tampon, a maxi pad. <laughs> Was just on the chair, and I took a video of it because that's probably going to be my next post on TikTok. Anyway. You sure that didn't New fall Jersey out of, buses? <laughs> no. You sure it didn't fall out of your bag? Because I've seen your tripod. No, oh, it did yeah. not. So yeah. for the audience, we, while it went, comes maybe in, maybe we can put the tripod on the table before the end of the day. And <laughs> so throw a for the for the that. audience, while he comes in here, and while he does a lot of stuff on on TikTok, so he carries around a tripod and he pulls out his tripod, and it's <laughs> like a nine inch sex toy. That's pretty much what it looks like. <laughs> And so, I, I don't know, maybe it fell out of your car. I don't no, know. no, it fell out. It I, I just looked and it was there. It was just sitting there. No, you know what happened? There was a girl sitting next to him. She saw the, the <laughs> tripod. She took the, she took the maxi pad and she said, oh, I'm, me and this guy are going to go at it. But oh, this, this episode is actually, do, we're doing something we've never done before. And you're the, you're the architect of the this. pioneer. Is we are going out over your TikTok live with the Suffering Podcast. Yeah. And that's an amazing thing. It's it's a little daunting. It's a little humbling. Uh, I like. I, I think it's fun. Listen, uh, we're 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 we've done over a hundred shows. We haven't released them all yet. We've never done one live yet, though. No, this is it. This is so. Thank so you. So you for... can't pick your nose today, like you usually do. Yeah, yeah when we edit that <laughs> out. See, you, yeah, usually the, our our producer Andrew in there edits all my my fumbles out and everything. So while we, every week we take a question from our audience, uh, this week's question comes from Linus O four O. And it says, what keeps you from returning to your dark place? Now, I know throughout your life you've come from some darkness. So how do you stop from going back there? Wow, man, that's a good question. Um, man, I think for me, what keeps me from going back to my dark place is um, looking at all the other kids that probably were in my situation and uh, just trying to be a role model for them. You know, I... I I, I, I need to do better, and I need um, – the only way they can do better is if I'm doing better. So that's what really keeps me from going to the dark place and really, and what really drives me um, to just stay good and, um, yeah, <laughs> like that. Well, you, you've <clears throat> developed this roadmap, and we're going to get into it on this on this show. You've developed this roadmap, this very odd road. Like, I don't even know where to start. Say, yeah. <laughs> like, this <laughs> is the you, oddest. Even start? This is the oddest roadmap to get out of a dark place that I've ever heard of. But before we do, Mike, what do you think? What, what keeps you from going to your dark place? You know, I, I generally think it's just the memory. You know, living through those dark times, you never want to be in that place again. You know, so you, you just you just sit back, you, you suck it up, and you say, I don't want to go back there anymore. You know, that, that's pretty much it. Listen, we all revisit our dark place every once in a while. Yeah. You know, every couple, you know, couple months you get into that 
fall into that rut again and you stay in that rut for a couple of days and you hate the feeling. So yeah, I guess the memory and the feeling, the feeling of being in my dark place. I don't like that. I, I have to sit there. Sometimes I get locked inside my own head and I have to sit there and consciously get myself out. Like, no, you're not there anymore. You're not, I have to do a lot of positive speech for myself. You, you can't go back there anymore. You, that's not you anymore. That was you for a short time and it wasn't a good you. You know, you, you, you have the support of your family. You have the love of your family. And, you know, I, I, I just don't ever want to go back there. Like Mike said, that memory, I, I, it's still very fresh in my mind. It wasn't that long ago. The, the biggest prison to escape is your own mind. Yeah. And that's, that's really what it comes down to. If you get it out of your mind, you know. You know, that's the hardest person to believe in is yourself. Yeah. Like you, I'm, we all believe in certain people around in our circle more than they believe in themselves. But there are times when we don't believe in ourselves. But, Wally, I know you grew up in some tough circumstances, so why don't you tell our audience a little bit about yourself? I grew up in the projects um, with a, a stepfather who uh, was a very abusive, narcissistic individual. And I really didn't even understand what narcissism was until, until recently, until the pandemic, when I was in Clubhouse and going into these mental health rooms and just learning about stuff. Um, but yeah, my stepfather used to beat up my mom like a lot, like ev almost every day. He used to either choke her, smack her, punch her. This is um, in New York? This is in New York, yeah. yeah, in Brooklyn, in the projects, in Marble Projects. And um, I grew up as a kid just watching this all the time. And, you know, as a kid, you want to protect your mom, but you can't because you're too small. Or you're going to get beat up too. So the only thing I could do was to console her, right? When she get beat up or she was bloodied, i go and hug her. But then what, what would happen was is that they would go upstairs, do the things that they do, and then I'd be in trouble, right? So I'd be in trouble for consoling my mom. My stepfather would punish me, and, and, that, and that was the cycle. So, and, and I didn't realize any of this stuff until, like I said, until the pandemic, um, what, how narcissists work. And narcissists, they just try to control every aspect of every part of your life. That's why none of my family, and, and it's crazy because I just came to this. I tell you, this is just recent. I'm learning about this. None of my um, family has ever been to my house. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's weird. Like my mom's brothers, yeah. her sister. My mom has five brothers. None Your house right now? No, no, no. And in, uh, in, in when I was a kid, when you were with a kid, my mom. None, none, no family. My grandmother has never been there. Her brother has never been there. Nobody. And then I, 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 I learned about the narcissist and. What they do is they alienate the person from the family. They so, beat you down physically and mentally. Yeah. And, and, and separate you and make narcissists want you to feel that you're the only person in their life. Right, right, you know, right. And that's what they do. They, they, they separate right. you from everything. But I've recently come to realize that narcissism is a, is a mm -hmm. byproduct of trauma. Right. And so Mike and I, and I say, and this is, this is a recent revelation for me. When I was in, in my bad, bad, bad place, I had to cave up. I had to protect myself. And the only way you can protect yourself is to try to control everything around you and make it what you need it to be at the particular time. It's a very unhealthy thing, right? but that's, it's a survival mechanism. And I know there's many different types of narcissism, but that was a narcissism that I experienced that I had. And I really had to just let go, right? I, you know, controlling my kids, controlling my wife. It was, it was, it wasn't healthy at all. You know what I think? I think because, um, my, so my stepfather was illiterate. Like, he couldn't read or write at all. Like, it, it, was, it was really, um, like, I, I never met somebody. Did he work at all or anything? Or? So here's the thing. He was a master carpenter. Mm, he could build yeah. anything. It didn't matter. And it would look perfect. And that's how, and, but my mom, on the other hand, my mom was smart. My mom had the degrees. And I think that um, maybe, I, I, I I think, like you said, um, he, he, he felt insecure because sure. my mom was really smart. You know, my mom was smarter than him. I, I always had to, like, he used to like um, uh, uh, audio equipment and stuff. So I always had to do all the reading to put this stuff together. I'm the one that helped him put everything yeah. together because he couldn't read it. And, and yeah, and, but, I mean, it, it, it was weird because my mom, with her mouth, was very strong. But in reality, she wasn't really strong at all. So you know, I, I think weird. the key thing you said is in, insecurity. I think narcissism is a byproduct of insecurity. Yeah. It's only insecure people that want to put other people down to make themselves look better. 
Yeah, and you as a young man, you're learning some. You're learning survival techniques. You you yeah. you didn't on understand the, on the fly. It. Yeah, you really didn't understand what you were what you were learning. But pe- kids see that stuff, and it imprints on them. And I'm su- I'm very surprised. You know, you can go one of two ways. It's like having a parent who's a smoker. Yeah. All right. So me and my bro- my parents were smokers. My brother ran so far away from cigarettes because he didn't want to have anything to do with where I became a smoker. All right. And and it took me a long time to quit smoking. So you see you see people growing up in bad household, and some of them exhibit that. So maybe not to give any excuse for your stepfather's bad behavior, but I'm sure those insecurities came from somewhere where down the line where he grew up. And that was a survival technique that he learned. I'm not trying to make excuses for him. No, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. No, no, I I, I never really looked at it um, that way because I don't really know his family. I know, like, I remember his brother. Oh, and that's another thing. His family came by. So, like, his brother, I met his brother. um, But I I don't really know much about his family. Um, All all I know is that um, I, I grew up wanting to kill this guy. Like, I, I, I hated him so badly that I'm talking about, we're talking about as, as, as old as seven or eight, I was thinking about how I could put, you know, in, in the projects, you know, sometimes you have a lot of roaches. And back then, uh, we would use the boric acid. It's like a powder that you put yeah. on the corner of the walls to kill the roaches. I was trying to figure out how could I put this in his capsules and his pills and Whoa. let him take it. And this is like seven, seven years eight old. years old. It's it's crazy, you know. Uh, you're and, you're actually thinking realistically. Th- yeah. Because kids will say, "God, I wish I, I I'd like to kill him. I right. wish he'd die. Yeah, I wish he'd die." Um, but you're actually thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, this was this is what I thought every day, like every day of my life. I I, I just wanted to kill this guy, and 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 I I even thought of the dumbest things, like you know when you watch cartoons you know you see all, all, all stupid movies you see them put the the sock in the muffler <laughs> I, all these things like came through my head you know you watch roadrunner and you yeah. watch them like <laughs> drop, <laughs> the anger, oh, drop a boulder on them yeah. yeah you know and then i mean the the abuse it, it, it was crazy because not only my mom was getting abused you know every day my stepfather told me that i would be in jail for the rest of my life i would never amount to anything and not to mention he had another son from my mom so that made it even worse because his son was like, you know, the golden the child. Golden child. Yeah, and, absolutely. and I was like, yeah, it was bad. It was it was really bad. And yeah. that's because you weren't your blood. We actually so that book right there, Fourteenth and Second, was written by a guy, New York guy, Charlie Cifarelli. And his father treated him the same way because I don't want to spoil it too much, but his father never believed that it was his own son. So that's where his younger brother was treated much better because obviously that was his son. Like he knew it. Right. Yeah, so I mean I, that makes a lot of sense. Did you did you get along with your I guess your half brother? Did you get along with him? Or? <laughs> okay, next question. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. So that so with my half brother, um, I think I took a lot of what was going on at home on him. So like, I I because I, I was bigger, I was a bigger brother. I remember I threw him off the bunk bed because he pissed me off, and I was like, if you cry, I'm gonna beat the hell out of you. So so I I, I took a lot of what his dad was doing to me, I was doing to him. Yeah. You're starting to exhibit the same behavior. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. becoming what I, you hate. Yeah, a narcissist. I, re- I, I remember, <laughs> exactly. Like, if if I broke something, I would tell him he would have to say that he broke it or else <laughs> it's going to be a problem. Don't, you know, you, it's hard. To, it, it, you often become what you hate. Yeah. yeah. Now, how did you how did you eventually break that cycle? Wow. <laughs> That's, <laughs> um, the, well, the, the, the cycle per se, without talking about the ping pong. So what what happened was is that um, I hated my stepfather so much. Like I, I never hated anyone at the level. I mean, even now he's dead, and I still hate him. Like, wait, wait until this episode's over. Yeah, you're probably gonna like, hate me and Kevin a lot too. So. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I I I I I hate him so much that I figured out I never want to be like him. I, I can't be like the person. That I hate so much, Absolutely. so that's how I broke the cycle because I, I just truly, truly hate this person. I think if you really, truly hate someone, that you're not gonna be like that person. Anything that reminds you of that person would just burn your your whole soul. So that that was the way I was able but to break w- the cycle. W- that wasn't you as a seven year old. No, no, no. That, no, no, that no. is much this, later, this in me later in life. Yeah. Yes. So how bad did it get? Uh, it got really bad. I mean, it, it uh, d- 
there was one time where um, I I was actually um, got I got in trouble in school. I got caught with a loaded weapon in school, and uh, whoa, 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 what? Yeah, so so I was already at thirteen. I already owned six guns, so I had six guns at thirteen years old, and um, three were mine, and three were from the rest of the gang. So the way that I found um, solace, or whatever you want to call it, uh, was two things. One was my gang that I had, and two was sports. So it was it was those two things was the way that I was able to escape from escape reality, escape from what was going yeah, on. Absolutely, right? The gang, the gang stuff gave me uh, family, the, the family plus the violence. Right? I, you know, the violent part of it would get the anger out. Sports also did that, but it did it in a different way. And um, I had some problems. I had a lot of problems in school. You know, as a kid, I was arrested a couple of times and, and, you know, I, I was always smart, so I never got caught. You know, I was always smart. I was always, always a smart kid. And, but I had some huge problems. And, um, did I, any of the teachers ever pick up on this in school? Say, Hey, look, there's a problem. Cause nowadays when the kid's yeah. acting out, there's a problem at home. Now the teachers were scared to death of me. Like they, <laughs> they, 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 they like, because I mean, I they was, knew you listen, had six listen, guns. Listen, <laughs> I was the kid. I, I was a very evil kid. Like, like you can't believe the level. I, I remember one time in class, there was a, a teacher that was pissing me off. And so what I did was is I purposely sat. So we had a chair was next to the door. I purposely sat this day at this door. You know what I did? I took out a lighter and I just held the lighter on the door because she's the one that's going to open the door. Oh. And I held the lighter to the like this, just sat there holding the lighter and she went and got third degree burns so that was the kind of kid i was so teachers teachers was like yo just kidding bro and, and yeah and um yeah you didn't bring in that boric acid in there yeah yeah so so anyway um i got in some really big trouble and i was looking at some serious time as a kid and um but as a kid i was remember i told you the second part of my life was sports right and I loved sports because sports was more of a healthier way to get the, out of that aggression, right? Like when I went in, like when I went and did gang stuff and you know stick people up or rob people or fight or, or whatever, I never felt like, oh man, it was a great day today. You know, I I still felt bad. Yeah. I mean, I felt a little bit okay, but I felt bad when I played sports. I felt like happy and and, and I was so numb and tired that when I went home, it, it didn't matter. And so in order to stay on the sport team, you got to have good grades, right? So I used to have kids do the work for me. Yeah. So I had kids like taking my notes, doing, doing the work. <laughs> and that's what saved me. No, that, that's what really saved me because my mom brought up to the judge. Uh, I don't know where she got this lawyer from, but she had a good lawyer. And, and they said, look, look at his grades. This kid's like almost a straight A student. If we put him in jail for a long time, his life is going to be ruined. So they came up with the great idea that they would send me to Africa to boarding school, yeah. which is which is one of the biggest disasters ever. But but yeah. why Africa? There's a, there's a million boarding schools in the United yeah. States. So because my mom had some African friends, and they said if you send him to Africa, they're gonna whip his ass straight, and and that's pretty much what happened. Like I, I got beat up in school every day. You but, cannot meet violence with violence. Yo, it doesn't work. But you know what's funny though? Being the only person by yourself in a place where you have no control, I couldn't do nothing. You, you don't have your, your, I, your I, friends I, with I you. I tried to fight. Yeah. I just got beat up. Yeah. So, yeah. so were you, did you play any football in high school? Uh, I played some football. I played basketball. I played volleyball. I played tennis. I was on a wrestling team. Because you you were like prime build for like a nice cornerback yeah, or corner, free safety. Yeah, I was going to say corner wide yeah, receiver. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, I played I played every <clears throat> every sport in school. Any sport that I could get my hands on. And that was I, to keep you out of the house too, I guess, too. Yes. Yeah. But there's a difference too. There's a difference. So when you're out there robbing and stealing, yeah. but you, you're you you're saying that you always, you, you never lost your humanity. Yeah, like like I I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't the like you know what like the kids today they're 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 very different than 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 we were when when, when I was a kid like I would never shoot someone just on the basis that they looked at me right I mean if I ever had to shoot someone it it, it would it, something serious would have had to happen right so I I always thought I, I never you know if we jump somebody I actually felt bad 
right? I actually, like, at the end of the day, I was like, damn, that was pretty messed up. You know, I, I felt bad. But some people don't feel, they, they don't feel bad at all. Yeah. I think I that's a process, that, though. Yeah. I do think it's a process where you become, you, you lose your humanity. Right. And once your humanity is totally out of you, you're lost. Yeah. There's, it's hard to bring you back from that. Yeah. And, yeah, so, you know, I got sent away to this, this boarding school. For two years. In Africa. In Africa. <laughs> sucked. <laughs> really sucked. And then uh, I came back. I came back two years later. Um, I was very strong because when I was in Africa, so so you you would think like I went to Africa and everything was like cool besides getting beat up by all the teachers. But I experienced a lot of racism there too. What part of Africa? In Nigeria. So I was in Nigeria. Okay. And I experienced a lot of racism. Uh, so apparently I wasn't the real black. And I wasn't the real black guy. And they used to make fun of me. And they used to say, they used to call me the kid who eats butter. They try to say I'm soft. No. Yeah. So so I had to deal with this. So I spent a lot of time fighting there. I joined this thing called Man of War. And Man of War is like, it's like if you took Boy Scouts and you timed it by 10,000. <laughs> it's, it's like the closest into being to in the most militant army. Like they make you stand up and just fall like a tree. And I joined this thing, right? to get some respect. I had to do something to get some respect yeah. there because I was getting zero respect. I joined this. I became much stronger, you know, bigger. And then I came back home two years later and um, my, my, my stepfather was grabbing my mom. And uh, Your poor mother, when you were in Africa, yeah. your poor mother. Listen, oh, man, I couldn't she, tell you. She had to take a beating. Yeah, it was crazy. It, it's just, I, I, I never understood, you know, and then I come back and 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 I want to try because I, I remember we were talking about something a little earlier. Uh, I had come back and I and he started again with her, but this time I was a different kid. I wasn't that same yeah. little kid anymore. You know, I'd spend this whole time fighting. I joined this crazy army thing, and 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 he went to choke her by the throat. And when he grabbed her, I looked at him. I didn't even say anything. I just looked at him. That was just a look. And I and he turned around and as soon as he saw me looking, immediately he goes. What are you looking at? You look over here, you're going to get the same thing. And I just lost it. Like I, I don't even remember running out of the house. All I know is I ran out the house because this time I didn't have any guns in my house. I had it at my friend's house. So I ran out the house. I went and got a gun, came back, put it to his head. And I was going to kill. Like, that was the day. Like, because, you know. That was it? Yeah. As a kid, when you watch this, it's a time bomb. Like, you're going to explode one day. And that was the day. And I came back. I was really going to kill him. And then, you know, my mom's screaming. She's flipping out. His son's not around. And um, my, mom calls, my, mom calls the, my mom calls the police. And she goes, hey, you guys got to hurry. My son's trying to kill my husband. And then I, almost, I put the gun to my mom's head. I was, I, I was going to kill. I was going to shoot both of them. It was, it was really, like, I don't know. It's probably, the, and I've been in some intense things in my life where people have put guns to my head or shot at me. This was the most intense thing ever in my life because, because you're fighting against rage too yes. you have so much fucking rage at that point you're not thinking correctly yeah and i remember i was shaking i started crying because you know all my life i try to protect my mom and now i can do it it's the first time that you know that i could step up and and she just turned against me your and, it sounded like your mother has a, has a form of of almost stockholm syndrome yeah, I think so. So ba Stockholm battered, battered woman syndrome. So Stockholm syndrome is if you look at Patty Hearst, she had Stockholm. Yeah. She gets kidnapped, and then the kidnap the kidnappers assimilate them, and then she becomes one of them, and she ends up going to rob a bank with them. Where your mother had just been beaten down for so long that that's all she knew. That's normal to her. It's yeah. amazing what you get used to. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. It was, it was crazy, man. But um, you know, something came on my shoulder, and and like I tell you, I was always a smart kid. I, I always always a smart kid. And something just told me and said, hey, if you do this right now, right here, everything your stepfather said about you is going to happen today. It yeah. will, you will probably be, be dead. Jail for the You'll be jailed for the rest of your life. At, at our worst parts, there is that one moment. Like you can, I can pick out the one moment in my, when things were at their absolute worst, and there was that pause, just like you're talking about, that pause, just to bring you back. One moment of clarity. That's all yeah. you need. That's all you need. Now, some people are never fortunate enough to have that moment of clarity, and they go ahead and they do the unthinkable, which would have brought your life into a far, far different oh, yeah. thing. You I probably mean, wouldn't be here now. <laughs> you wouldn't not. be sitting with us today. <laughs> had you not had that pause, and let's say you, you didn't kill your, your mother and your stepfather, had you not had that pause, what road do you think you were going down, like your outlook on, on life at that point? 
it would have been bad. I, I would have definitely either wound up in jail for life or dead because, so I don't have any friends that I grew up with when I was a kid. All my friends either probably dead or in jail. So all the friends I have are all new friends and those are people I, I was running with. So 100%, I would, I would, yeah, I wouldn't be here. I don't think I for sure because I, I think, at that point, I was just so enraged. It would have went to a di whole different level yeah. because I can see how, like, like, like you mentioned before, like that would be a cause to lose my humanity. You know, when you want to, all your life as a kid, you see your mom get beat up, you want to protect her. Now you have the chance to do it. Now is the time to do it. You know, not that your mom calls and says, hey. My husband and my son are fighting, come handle the situation, but says specifically, my son is trying to kill my husband. So well, I think yeah. I think that's a that's a young child thing because as a child we always try to toe that edge of the cliff to get the best view of what it looks like down at the bottom. Right, right, right. And we try to get as close and close and close, and kids are fearless and they get as close as they can. Some kids fall over and we lose them, but then. Some kids just get just close enough where they see the danger of what the fall would be. Right. And that's when they back up and say, I ain't doing that again. <laughs> they say, fuck that, man. I'm a... <laughs> now, you you back up from that situation. What happens next? The police show up? No, I was already gone before the police showed up. <laughs> I, I was. You were a smart kid. I, yeah, I was really <laughs> smart. I, I was. I, I I left and then. Um, but I, I got. I, I, I actually got. I wouldn't say I was arrested, but I, I got stopped and pulled into the station and I told him I said I never had a gun because there's no proof that I had a gun anyway so I was like that's not true you know my mom got beat up my mom you know suffers from domestic violence and so I just never went home I, I spent a year living in the streets and things were getting really bad during that one year because now I didn't have a place to live because I was not going back to that place what year but, what year about is this so at this at this a at this time I uh, let me see I was 14 when I left. I was 16, so I was 16 years old. Yeah, but what, what's the year around? Oh, man. Because I can't tell this how is, old you are, and I'm not even going to guess. I ain't telling you neither. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I, don't, I don't know exactly. Well, was this before, yeah. like, uh, was it the area you hung around? Was it yeah. Brooklyn? Was Brooklyn, it, yeah. It Mar was Brooklyn, okay. Marble Projects. Because, you know, they did a lot of renovations in New York. Oh, it's oh. very different now. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. the, the the New York has changed, and that's why I'm trying to get a, a, yeah, a lay of the land. Yeah, maybe 90s. It's got to be early. So it was before, like, Times Square got cleaned up by Julia. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it was definitely, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. Times Square is one of the places I used to hang out, hang out to. <laughs> and that, that's, that used to be, <laughs> geez, back then it was like, uh, I, I heard some people talking about it. You couldn't go out of the house without your wallet. Well, oh, yeah. your wallet. You'd get robbed. Oh, yeah. yeah. What people would do in Times Square... They would, uh, especially especially if you are, because uh, I, I did it with them, <laughs> especially if you were a foreigner, people would escort you to the ATM in the bank. They would escort you, especially especially the guys who did the, the, the like, like the, you know, the, the what do you call it there? The three card. The three card Monte. Monte. Those guys, like, you would have to be very careful because yeah. they would say, come on, we're going to the ATM and, and they take all your money. Wow, like, that's crazy. Like, Times Square was crazy, but, um, yeah. And it's like a tourist capital of the world, you know? Yeah. And, and they couldn't even clean it up back then. That's crazy. And then somehow, and this this still shocks me to this day, You <laughs> coming from where you came from to how the hell did you find <laughs> ping pong? Like, seriously, out of all the things and all the sports that you loved, right. why ping pong? <laughs> I used to smack people with paddles all the time. So, you know, I, I'm pretty good at this. Hey, that's hey. It's funny you said that. It's funny you said that I'm because onto something. that that's along the lines of what happened. So, um, I actually hated ping pong. I made fun of all the kids in my high school who played it. Like I bullied them all the time. So I hated the sport. Um, one day I was shooting pool at, at this pool hall that had ping pong tables and wasn't interested at all. But I got upset. And I took my pool stick and shattered it. Oh, no. and I didn't do it on purpose. I just hit it, and the pool stick shattered. And um, I had to on someone's head or on no, the, no, no, on, 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 on the table. Just <laughs> and 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 I had to. So when I was younger, I used to anything that happened to me, I would take out on someone else. I would blame everyone for everything that happened to me. I could stub my toe, and I'm gonna find someone to take it out on. So. Of course, after I break my pool stick, I'm like really pissed off because this was a very expensive pool stick that I actually stole. 
So, <laughs> yeah. So I, I had worked nice, hard to get that. Yeah, I did. Stick. I worked very hard to get it. So, you know, I, I'm angry now and I see some Asian kids playing ping pong. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go mess with these kids. So I go over there and I say, hey, I want to get a hit. And the guy goes, you play this? I was like, I don't play this. I just, I just want to hit the ball. Just, just, just give me the racket. I take the racket from him. So the guy hits the ball to me. And the object, the idea was to hit him in the face with the ball. I was trying to hit him, <laughs> right? Um, because, you know, if I just walked up to him and punched him, you know, we're on camera, you know, it wouldn't be a good look. So I tried to hit him with the ball, and the ball went on the table. And the kid goes, oh, my God, you're, you're, you're amazing. You play this? I was like, I don't play this, man. He was... Because I was, I was getting pissed off now. The guy's thinking I'm good at ping pong. I was like, no, nah, I don't play this. He was like, hey, there's a ping pong club that you have to go to. You got to check it out. Like, everyone's so good. They stand far from the table. And I was like, you're crazy. There's no place where people gather to play this. See, I'm a street this. kid, man. I, I go, I, I rob people. <laughs> exactly. I don't play ping pong. Come on. What's... Exactly. But, you know, uh, what happened was is the athlete in me, because I'm, you know, at that time, I was a big athlete and I love sports. And I was like, is there really a place where people play this? All right. So, so I said, let me go check it out. So I, I go and check out this place. I walk in. It's, it's a pool hall that has about, I think I remember, maybe six ping pong tables. And when I walked in, people were playing, like playing, playing. And the thing that attracted me to the sport was that every single person that was playing was black. And I was like, wait a minute. Black people play this. <laughs> I was like, okay, this this is strange. Well, it's always like a, it was always like an Asian sport to me. You know? Well, that's yeah. what I thought, and yeah. I saw every person. You know, they 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 were either you know from the islands or from Africa, from you know some other place, but nonetheless they were black. And I was like, oh, maybe this sport is cool. So that's how I, that's how I first got interested, and I started trying to play. Nobody would play with me. Everyone was like, nah. So that was really bad. Uh, I met some old guy who would play with me. I think at the time he was, he passed away. Uh, but I, th I think at the time he was like, I don't know, maybe in his late 50s, 60s. And the guy would crush me. And I would get so angry. And I'm, I'm like, how can this old guy beat me? You know, I'm a seasoned athlete. Before you go any further, I'm 56. Don't call us old guys. <laughs> <laughs> now you know what I mean. But at the time, I was younger. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, this is crazy, man. So that made me want to play more because, like, this guy was just killing me. And um, eventually, uh, down the line, I meet an Israeli guy who comes up to me and says, hey, do you have a partner to play? And I says, uh, no, not really. He goes, well, I'll pay you $20 if you can be my steady partner because he's in and out of town. And he wants to come and have someone to hit with. And at that time, I could hit. And I could hit four hands. I could hit okay. Um, and I said, yeah, of course. $20 was a hustle. You know, because yeah. mind you, remember, I was like pretty much in the street. And I was like, yeah, $20, let's go. And I would play with this guy. He would pay me $20, um, you know, every, every time we played. And then, uh, you know, I became a little close with him, right? And, and I was always open about my life and like what I'm going through and the things I was going through. Right. I just didn't care. I was like, you know, and um, but for him, it was more like a TV show. Right. Like if you if you don't know anyone who's lived that life or been in that life, it's very hard to 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 understand how, you know, a kid at 13 has guns. But it's really easy. It's not difficult. It's something that's like when people tell me, say, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I know. Right. So for him, it was more like a TV show. So he was uh, listening, but he wasn't hearing. And then uh, one day I went to the club, a 22 fell out of my bag and uh, he saw it. He looked at me, I looked at him and uh, <laughs> he had this look on his face and it was almost like, I still remember it till today. It was like all the puzzle pieces had just clicked together and he gave me this look and I was like, yo, I'm out. Cause I don't know what he's gonna do. He yeah. call police, I don't know what he's gonna do. So I left, I thought, well, you know, there goes my $20, I'm never gonna see this guy again. Okay, whatever. And he calls me two days later and he says, hey, um, are we still playing? And I was like, all right, let's, let's, yeah, I guess. So I go meet him, we play, and then the guy goes to me, hey, I want to invite you to my house. I was like, okay, that's weird. Yeah, that's because, a little odd. Right? Like you just saw a gun fall in my bag. You want to bring me to your house where your family's at? Not to mention his house was near Hunter Mountain, which is two and a half hours away from New York City. In the woods, and yeah. I'm like, this guy's in the... well, so he's got some kind of intention. Yeah, or yeah. I was like, what's going on? So I wind up going with him, meeting his family. You know, they they uh, his family lived up there all the time. He was in New York, there in Israel, and um, 
I played ping pong with them and, and, you know, ate with them. And I think he wanted to show me what family was, like what real family was. He was and your custom auto. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly yeah. And, and then he tells me, he says, hey, um, I really want to help you. Because at that time I was really interested in ping pong. He's like, I, I really want to help you. I have a connection in Germany and I'm going to pay for you to go to Germany to learn ping pong. And I was like, what? Didn't you, that, now coming from where you, you came from, did you think there was an ulterior motive? Because I'm sure oh, in, yeah. in the neighborhood yeah. that you grew up in, nobody did. No, nobody gave you no, stuff. No, 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 no. Did I you would, think he was like, you know, he's little, maybe he was into you? I thought yeah. in the beginning when he was, when he was telling me, uh, I, want to, I want to invite you to my home. I was like, what do you mean invite me to, to your home? He's like, oh, to meet my family. So when he said to meet my family, I was like, but even even then I was still like, a okay, that's weary. weird. Like, yeah. why would you bring a kid, like, you should be running far away from me, not, like, trying to get closer Especially to me. Especially seeing a gun fall out of your bag. Yeah, so it was kind of weird, man. And you know what's funny? You know what the craziest thing about this is? The craziest thing is that he never mentioned that gun that fell out of my bag. Really? It, it never, because, and I, I don't know, I don't know if he did it on purpose, not mention it, or if he just never did. Because if he would have mentioned it, I would have never talked to him again. Yeah. I'd probably still been in the same situation. Or maybe is there a possibility that this guy understood? I am. I, I, I was, yeah, I guess. I'm still trying to figure that right, out. Right now, apparently, to me, it sounds like the guy just had a big heart and he saw something in you and wanted to help you out. Like if I if I saw, I, I grew up in a house full of abuse, and if I saw a kid, and it's, it, it kind of helps me out when I coach young kids, if I see a kid that's acting a certain way, I sort of, I won't say nothing to him, but I'll look at him. I might spend a little extra time with him because I know what he's going through at home. Or if the kid is misbehaving in a certain way or doesn't listen in a certain way because I understand it. it, it I'm, I'm, from, I'm an outsider looking in on this situation, and I see this guy taking an interest in you in a certain way. It might be him, his way of paying something forward that happened to him. That that's the other thing I was gonna say. Did something happen to him? Oh, where... I never even thought about that. Yeah, yeah that's that's the first time. I... That's why we brought it's you in. We're trying to learn your stuff here. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> the first time that ever came up. That's yeah. the first time that ever came up. I never even never even thought about that. Yeah, he could have had something in his childhood where he just you know saw something in you that maybe he saw in himself as a child. Not all Israelis are you know they're military people <laughs> going at the Wailing Wall. I know some some true blue criminal Israelis. Right, I, right. I know them. And they they deal with some stuff. If he was a true Israeli, they deal with some stuff that that we that the cameras never show and never see. Right, right. So maybe it's a possibility where he was heading down that path and saw you in a similar situation. And you know, those are those are the important people that we need to pay attention to in our life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Do you still keep in contact with him? So I lost contact with him like many years ago when Israel had that big war. So, um, and then we've been trying, to, we, we spent a lot of time to try to find them because we made a film um, not that long ago, maybe like three years ago, um, documentary about uh, these ping pong tables I put in Bryant Park. And uh, as part of the film, we wanted to find this guy that would so great. that we could, it, it could tie into the story about, look, what you did. Do you want to shout out me. his name? See if he's out there? I mean, uh, hey, listen. I don't so know his last name, but his first name is Alec. His first name is Alec. And it took me many years to remember his first name, actually. You know, so, I think there's maybe only one Israeli name Alec out there. So maybe... <laughs> yeah, well, maybe maybe about listen. what age would, would Alec be? Now, oh, man, maybe... He's going to be in his 70s. 70s. Yeah. So if anybody knows an Israeli gentleman, about 70 years old, first name Alec... That lives near Hunter Mountain? Yes, yeah, that lives, <laughs> like, across the street from Hunter. <laughs> that, that, you know, please reach out to us. There's somebody out there that's going to listen to this or maybe watch one of your TikToks right, and, right. And, and know this person. So, but you the, know. I just want to get back to... You did go to Germany? Yeah, yeah, I went. I, I, he sent me. I, I, he didn't go with oh, me. He just sent you on your own. Yeah, yeah. He paid everything. Everything was paid for. Um, I, I lived in a school with like the top athletes of different sports, so not just ping pong. Yeah. I went there for ping pong, but I lived in in, in a school with like the best athletes. But even then, it, it. I mean, just just because you take a kid out out of where he's from and put him, stick him in somewhere, doesn't mean that I changed. Yeah. Like I was still this violent kid. You still got street in you. Yeah, and then I, I was still this, this violent kid. And if not, even a little bit more because I, I didn't know any of these kids and everyone. But the thing was, you know, everyone was was always being extra nice. You know, oh, you're from America. Oh, you're so cool, blah, blah, blah. So 
it took me a little while to adjust because I didn't know how to. Yeah. I'm not used to that. Like, you you know, everyone was just genuinely, ah, oh, man, you're cool. You're from New York and, and this and that. And, and you know, there's a, a, a thing they call, it's called killing you with kindness, right? Yeah. So that's what happened. You know, it's a real thing. I, I became confused. I didn't know how to react. You know, and I always say this all the time. It's really hard to punch someone in the face when they're being extra nice to you. <laughs> it's it's so difficult. I mean, some people can do it, but that takes a different kind of person to do that. I can't do that. Because like I told you before, even when I was doing my gang stuff, I, I still had, you know, I still had humanity in me, right? So a little compassion. Well, how long yeah, did it take how long did oh, it take for you to do this? It took me it took me the first maybe like a month. A month, maybe a month and a half of 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 just like, you know, listening to these kids because everyone's so nice. And then, like I said, just like back in the house, something comes to me and it says, hey, why are you upset? Why are you angry? You're not in your abusive home anymore. You're so far from it. You're, you're, you're not even in the same country. Why are you angry? Here, you're with people who actually like you and they like you not because they can, uh, not because of what you can do for them, not because you can pick up your gun for them, but they like you because it's they like you. Yeah. yeah. And so once I was able to figure that out, then I started to let down the guard a little bit, became did you a little more friendly. Did you appreciate their friendliness after a while? Yeah, because it was it was it was just like I don't know if the word is wholesome, but genuine. It was genuine. It's very genuine. And it was like you know, I mean, coming from your upbringing, you probably didn't have too many people that were nice and showed you attention. Right. Like you said, because you're Wally Green. Right. And, and you're I there, know, they didn't know you. No preconceived notions and just looked at you as a person that you were. Right. And and I never had to ever think of, oh, what am I gonna have to do for this person? Like I never had to ever think of that. Whereas when you know, when I was doing my gang thing, that's always in your mind, you know. <laughs> All right, I know I gotta do something. Gotta owe this guy sense. a favor. Yeah. But there it was just like, I don't have to do anything, just be me. And people are just nice and yeah. So that was that was the first change in my mindset which actually um set me up to to be a nicer person that's a that's amazing because it, it probably gave you after a while when you finally dropped your guard to give you the appreciation because you can only appreciate things when you know the other side yeah you know you can only appreciate good things in life when you know the suffering and not to be not to give us a shameless plug but you're on the suffering podcast so i'm gonna do it <laughs> You, that's that's what we preach on here all the time. You have to look at the back. You have to know what the back of the page is in order to appreciate the front. And that sounds like what you what you did. Now, how did this become a profession for you? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I got really good at ping pong, and um, I came back to America. And um, my a big break came. I was I, I was starting playing tournaments, a lot of tournaments in the U.S. And uh, there was one tournament. It wasn't even like a ranked tournament. It was just like some throw put together tournament that was put together in Chinatown. And um, I went there, and some kid was visiting uh, from China, and uh, we got to play against each other. So as we we're playing the match, the kid was really loud. And he was going, "Yo, yo!" Ah! And, and, and then I started getting pissed off. So <laughs> shut the fuck up. Yeah, that's exactly like <laughs> exactly what was happening. And then you know the. Because like, like like I say, even though my mindset was changed, I was still hood. And and uh, I was like, this dude, bro, all right, we're going to play this game. So then I would make a point. I will go, that's it, boy. Send him back. Send him back. And I will just start talking mad trash. And we we're going back and forth, me, me, me and this kid. And um, after the match, uh, Rockstar Games, actually, uh, if you guys know Rockstar yeah, Games, they made Brandon Auto. Sure. Um, they happened to be there scouting. And they came up to me and says, hey, uh, you do you know Rockstar Games? Like, hell yeah, Grand Theft Auto, man. I played that whole time. I love it. And they were like, before they even finished the the, the sentence of we're gonna make, I was like, yes, yeah, for sure, let's do it. <laughs> so they they uh wanted to make the world's first real ping pong game called Rockstar Presents Table Tennis. So I was like, hell yeah, I got on it. Um, I did like ninety percent of the motion capture, and then and and like I said, I was always smart. So when I said yes, I said yes with some intention. Because I like ping pong a lot and I wanted to be a pro. And the only way I could be a pro is if I had money to do it, right? Because yeah. to travel around the world, there's no chance if you don't have any money. And so um, I did this game with them. Uh, the game beat every sports game. 
actually. Madden, uh, 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 NBA Live, all of them for best sports game. It was the most talked about sports game of the year because Rockstar doesn't make any games that weren't violent. Yeah. <laughs> and here they're making a ping pong, ping pong game. game. People are like, what? There's no way. They... So um, I, I made this game with them, did a lot of promotions for it um, in Japan and around the places. And then I said, hey, um, I want to play pro. I want to play on the pro tour f- for USA. Would you guys sponsor me? And the answer was like, yes, immediately. Because sponsoring me would also get the game around the world. Yeah. Right? So I was like, all right. So, so, so they were like, well, you need to come up with a budget. And I was like, what's that? <laughs> I didn't even know what a budget was. I didn't know it. I'm used to twenty dollars from Alex. Yeah, exactly, just to exactly. <laughs> I had no idea, but I, 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 I you know. But you've re- made things work it. throughout your life. Yeah, and this just sounds like another thing that you just made work. Yeah, yeah. I put together a budget, and they agreed, and they sponsored me, and I traveled the entire world <laughs> just playing ping pong. And I sucked, and I still traveled the entire world playing ping pong. I seriously doubt you sucked. Yeah. I did. I you did. don't. You don't get approached by rock star games. Yeah. I mean, I was sucked. good, but I, I wasn't. I definitely was not when, when I. Well, when I first started, I, I, I was definitely not the level of the top players in the world. But I mean, and I also had a weird. I also had a a, a really bad mindset that I had to change because, like I said, I, I was like a superstar athlete. And everything I did, like when I was in school, I was MVP for volleyball, basketball. Anything I ever played or touched, I was the best. And and I thought for sure I'm going to be ping pong. Of course I'm going to be the best. Be but best I, ping pong player ever. I sort so of understand gravitation towards what some would consider an odd professional sport. Yeah. I, in college, I had to take a gym. And I'm looking through them and, you know, I, I take badminton. <laughs> all right, I take badminton, and every, all of my friends. I was I played football, you know. I, all my friends are making fun of me, like you're playing. <laughs> well, there was about a group of five of us that could really play. Right, right, right. It was the most fun I've ever had. You know, most of the people are off in the corner doing their thing, but right. there was a five of us who really, really played, and it was so much fun. It was, it was a, a, a dynamite experience, and I, I don't, you know, I don't look back on it at all. Right, right. So how do you, how do you go? further how do you you're, you're on the pro tour now are you winning these tournaments hell no <laughs> I'm getting destroyed are you bro. at least placing and getting money out of them hell no <laughs> but it doesn't matter you doesn't got a matter. backer see so so what happened with me is i had to i had to fix my mindset right i, I had to realize that i was probably the worst play the worst pro in the world and and once i figured that out then i had to make goals that actually made sense because the goals i was making were not making any sense i was like yeah i'm gonna beat this dude this dude's been playing since three bro you're not beating him uh so i started making goals that made sense so the first goal i made was i gotta get five points if i can get five points in one game out of four i'm the champion and i made myself believe this so i would go and i would just play for five points five points it and i would get five points and i would go yeah and i would make this noise and people would be like what's wrong with this dude he just lost but no one understood that. Uh, no one understood what I was doing, and the whole point was just to make goals that actually make sense, and then celebrate the goals. So me jumping up and down was a celebration of making those small goals. So that's how I started getting better. I started going from five points one game to five points every game to one game to two games, three games to a match, and that was the only way that I could get better. And and that's how I started getting better. But uh, people. Was just making fun of me. <laughs> what was what was your top accomplishment as a pro ping pong player? Oh man, I think man, I won a lot of tournaments, uh, stuff in 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 America, like a lot of rating events. But uh, I think my my best accomplishment on the table didn't come as a pro. Didn't well, I was a pro, but it didn't come on the pro circuit. It actually came in just a normal American tournament where I was playing this kid who was actually not even as good as I am, but he was really fast and, and, and just everything was just so quick. And I was very slow behind him and the kid, and he was also, I think was maybe 200 rating points lower than me. So similar to, similar to chest. And um, he was beating me two zero nine six, and the games go to 11. So two zero nine six, I had no chance. And then I, I remember that I, 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 I sat down, I thought about what I was doing, and I said, what can I do different? How can I win this? What, what can I do different? And then I said, you know what? I'm going to slow this game down. 
I'm going to play as slow, as humanly slow as possible, right? Because the cue is boom, 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 so fast. And so what I would do is I would take extra time when I would serve. I would look at him, I'd bounce the ball on the table, look at him again. And when I would serve, I would serve in a slower motion. And I wind up winning that match. And I think when, when people ask that, I think that is the biggest accomplishment. Getting right? in his head and taking him out of his game. Yes, and yeah. just being able to adjust. and and You adjusted. Yeah. But you've adjusted throughout your whole life. Yes. You've had yes. to. And did yeah. you ever get a sponsorship deal for Flexo Light Ping Pong Paddles? No. <laughs> All right. But that's what Forrest Gump. That, yeah, that I know, his, right? Yeah. That was his thing. I my my uh, uh table tennis sponsor is a company called Yola. It's J O O L A. And uh they sponsored me for a long time. It's been a long time they sponsored me. And um they're 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 a really good company, really good group of people. Uh yeah, so so that that's my uh table tennis sponsor. It's called Yola. But it's one game that everybody has played. Has played, yeah. Everybody has played. And we were talking a little bit before the show how everybody's played cornhole. But you watch cornhole on ESPN, the Ocho. It's different. It's different. <laughs> it's the same thing with ping pong. Yeah. But it's a it's a relatable game. You know, it's like bowling. Everybody's going bowling, but right. you watch the guys on the pro on the pro bowling tour. It's it's a lot different. Right. You know? Right, right, right. Um, but you've taken it to the next level. Are you you're are you still actively in tournaments? No, no. Now, now I just kind of um, you're officially retired. Officially retired, but I mean, I I play mostly for fun, and I play pro paddle tennis. So that's my other sport is paddle tennis. So I play pro paddle tennis. But, Surprised uh, you didn't pick up that pickleball. Nah, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said that about ping pong. Yeah, exactly. That is true, right? You said that no, about no, ping this, pong. You know, next is, next year when he comes on, no, he's gonna be no, 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 Wally no, Green, the pro pickleball. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. <laughs> I, and it's crazy. I'm under a lot of pressure to play pickleball a, a lot. I have a lot of people in my air, in my DMs, because... Everybody says it's it's so much fun. Yeah, it's but for me, it's it's a bit slow, and it's not fun for me. Like, you know, I play, I play ping pong, which is super, super fast, super, you know, aggressive. And then I play paddle tennis, which is even more aggressive. Um, Pickleball is just very slow. It's for an older generation, mostly. Well, it yeah. was created for that. Yeah. But now you got a lot of younger people playing it. And um, it's just not fun for me. Like, I trust me, I, I, I just came back from Vermont. I was in Vermont giving a talk. And uh, I met the guy who runs the number one agency, for the agent for pickleball players. <laughs> and I'm like, man, I just can't get away from this, man. It's just everywhere I go. It's, um, call, it's calling you. It's nah, a, call. yeah, it's it's a not, calling. It's, it's not, it even is. check this out. Even my sponsor, even my sponsor right now makes pickleball paddles. Yeah, They're but you you don't even play with paddles anymore. Yeah, I play with my cell phone. Let's you, go. <laughs> so if you go if you go on your TikTok, it, t TikTok, it's Wally yeah. Green NYC. Yes, official, official, official. You will see Wally playing. I don't think I've seen one on there where you're playing with a with a, a paddle. Oh man, they they're there, but but. It's either my little paddle you'll you'll see or my cell phone. Uh, there is a couple playing with my paddle, but that's and way you were down. playing with a sword on one of them. Oh yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, yes, I, yes. I checked out that. I yeah, looked through a yeah. lot of those different things, and you got the one of the, the one of the craziest catchphrases I've ever heard. <laughs> you'll hear it on every single one of them. I'm not going to give it away. <laughs> those people watching on TikTok Live right now, I'm sure yeah, they're well yeah, aware of yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Um, but just think, pickles are green, right? Pickles are green. Wally Green. No, no, you can't get, get away from the pickle away. fight. <laughs> it, you know, I mean, just think of the marketing. It's, it's, it's not happening. Now, before <laughs> before we go, they they've recently made a few movies. They, they were they've integrated ping pong, Forrest Gump being one of yeah. them. One of my favorites, Balls of Fury. I know about it very well. Balls of Fury is one of because oh god, that's fun. That's a funny, funny movie. I just I, I know about it very well. <laughs> when 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 the Balls of Fury, Balls of Fury, came out, Randy. Montana was that what it Ran, what was his name Ran, it was Randy something Rand, yeah I forgot but that came out so you figure our club's been open for 13 years then we did naked ping pong another three Na years naked so 16 naked ping pong yeah here we go <laughs> so I, 16 so that came out like 15 years ago about see now that falls of fury that's like pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the that's how pickleball was started. Yeah, listen, you, you, listen. <laughs> I know you've played with a cell phone. You play with a little paddle. You never played with that and a no, sword. No, you never no, played with no, that no, before, no, did you? No, no. For, forget about forget about. Listen, 
<laughs> Forget about pickleball. I tell everybody, just play paddle tennis or yeah. pop tennis is the new name for it. Yeah. That's but, much more fun sport. But that that it, and it was a it was a comedy. Obviously, it was a fun movie. Yeah. But yeah. it it was wrapped around this game that everybody knows that you have brought to the forefront. And now your your clubs, these amazing ping pong clubs. People go in there, and it's it seems to be always crowded. I don't know if that's just the appearance, but it seems to be always packed and yeah. always crowded. Yeah. And what, tell us a little bit about those. We used to have a party in our apartment called Naked Ping Pong. So that's where the Naked Ping Pong comes from. And all it was, it, it was just a ping pong party. You know, it's just like bring your own beer, bring your own drinks, let's have fun, you know. And before we called it Naked, it was just a party. And then we had to come up with a website. We called it Naked Ping Pong, which means the state of mind of just enjoying life and doing what you want and not really caring. And uh, we would have these parties and the parties would get really big. We even had our DJ was, if you know who Dame Dash is, yeah, was Dame Dash's you. son, was our DJ. Really? Yeah, so uh, we had a DJ and, you know, we made this website. Websites got so many hits. Then we started getting uh, companies saying, hey, you know what? We would like to sponsor you guys. We They wouldn't give us any money, but they say, we'll give you all the product you want. So alcohol, beer, Red Bull. Perfect. Right. And then we said, okay, well, you know, we can't sell alcohol in the apartment. It's illegal and you get kicked out. But what we can do is we can make something official, make a tournament, uh, you know, around 7 o'clock, you know, and uh, charge people $20 to get in and all you can drink free. Wow. So it was a pregame spot. Yeah. People would come and we used to have a line that used to go around the block. Like it, it was crazy. To one point we had to hire a bouncer. But then the bouncer kind of killed the vibe because, you know, naked ping pong was just about being free yeah. and and having fun, and um, that's how we started this business. Well, there's not a I, I don't think there's a big gang population in the ping pong world. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> you know the Jets and the Sharks playing against each the other. The Warriors. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you, do you understand something? I, something I've noticed about you is there is just something around you where you dream it and you do it. Yeah, it's uh yeah. So that's yeah, that's that's been pretty much my my life. I, I, I think I don't know, I think some people say manifestation. I'm really good at that. Like I, I, I just believe like if I want to do something and I really passionate about it, some way it's gonna happen. You wish it into existence. Yeah, like yeah. it may not happen today, it may not happen tomorrow, but eventually it's gonna happen and it and it always happens. I just happen to be at the right place at the right time. Always. And, and you have such a, a positive outlook on things now. I mean, I can't picture you being from the streets. I mean, you're just yeah. such, a, you know, such a hell of a nice guy. But, Wally, you always were at the right place at the right time. Yes. Yes, it's true. You know, even when you were in, living with your mother and your stepfather, you you had to be there. Like, yeah. you needed to be there. I think so. Because if, if you weren't there and things didn't transpire the way, you would have never been living on the street, would have never met um, right. Alec, the yeah, Israeli yeah. guy. I mean, the, this chain of events. There's there's a reason for this chain of events, and now you're 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 this superstar. Like this, this is crazy. Yeah. Do you ever think back and say, you know, how did I get from there to here? Sort of like recapping your life. I look back at it, and and it's like, wow, that's crazy. I always say that's that's crazy. I've been sitting here the whole time and, saying that's and, crazy, and and, <laughs> and, it, and it's ping pong. I'm like, that's really crazy. Mm. But um, you can change the world with anything. Yeah, it's, it's nuts. Change the world but, one paddle at a time. <laughs> but something he said just before, I was just thinking about what was really funny. You know, when when you talk to me now, like, you you kind of don't feel, you know, pe people don't feel like, oh, yeah, this guy was gangbanging hard yeah. when he was young. Because, you know, like, my character's totally changed. You know, and sometimes I, I, I do get out of character when, like, you when know. When need be. yeah. But uh, this is a funny story. This is actually a funny story. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was pra practicing paddle tennis. And, uh, you know, you see me walking with my paddles. And um, there was a kid, uh, a young kid, too. And um, I was pushing a city bike. And the city bike started making an alarm. And the kid just saw me and thought that I was the guy that he could pick on. I don't know why he would assume that. But, you know, he started laughing. And, and so I went up to him. I was like, yo, you know, do you have a problem? Like, like what's wrong? And he's like, what? Do you know who I am? And, and I said, bro, I said, listen, 
I'm not the dude, bro. I, I said, I would put you away right now. Like, I'm not even doing it. And he started like, what, what? You're no gangster. And when he said that, it just made me kind of laugh. And so, you know, I, I knew this kid was young and I really didn't want to hurt him. So I said, listen, bro, take out your phone. <laughs> this is really funny. He goes, why? I said, just take out your phone right now. Just, just take out your phone. He take out his phone. I said, my name is Wally Green. I said, Google Wally Green, former teen gangster. And let me see what you see. He Googled it. He was like, oh my God, wow, you really? And I was like, bro, listen, don't judge people by the way they look. You, Cause you never know who you, yeah. you never know who's in front of you in anything. It could be good, it could be bad. Never judge people, bro. I said, you know, just be real, be authentic, be yourself. And you know, life is good. You know, and, and, and we shook hands and that was it. But it was kind of funny. Like those kind of situations can go a different way, right? Suppose I was still in that life, right? I would have hurt that kid really bad. Like, really? For what? Because yeah. he wasn't going to do anything. He's a young kid who was high and, you know, just being a kid. But that situation could have went really bad. And yeah, that happened so with, it was funny. That happened with Paul Castellano, the, the mob boss. So he was driving from his home, and some kid, almost he almost hit the kid on the bike in, in his limousine, and the kid started yelling obscenities. <laughs> the guys get out of the car, they throw the kid in the back of the limo, and he takes him to the house, and he goes said exactly what you said, exactly. It's like, do you know who I am now? Okay, never never underestimate who you're talking to, who's wow. in front of you. So that's, that's, that, that's that rings crazy. true. Yeah, yeah, imagine that. That, that, kid, that kid's that asshole would have puckered off. <laughs> yeah. Wally, oh, so where, what's next for you? Man, now, you know, I'm, I'm all about right now I'm just – inspiring kids man I, I i really love i really love inspiring these kids and motivating kids like that's like my new thing now you know i want to talk to kids and just uh, a couple of weeks ago or m maybe a month ago i i, I did something with this uh, company called andres children and uh they help kids who suffer like ptsd and trauma and i got to hang out with these kids a lot of these kids has been you know family abuse and uh just hanging out with them and talking to them and you know, seeing that they know that you've been through it and they're opening up to you. Like, that was, like, one of the cool... I mean, it, it was tough. It was hard because it brings you... Like you said, it brings you back to that. Like, doing that kind of stuff brings you back to that dark spot. Yeah. But you need to do it because uh, these kids that they're suffering, like, it, it was such a such a great time to be with these kids. and You're doing what I Alec did for that. you. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Just, yeah. You're paying it forward. Say, you know, you, you're, yeah. you've become so many these kids that won't aspire... To yeah. want to be like, could well, you could you think about that when you were twelve or thirteen years old? No, nah, definitely not. <laughs> so but, where where can we find you? Throw um, out some plugs because I know you got, yeah. you got a, you got so many coals in the fire right now. It's I crazy. Have a lot of stuff going on. Um, Instagram is a good place. People can follow me on Instagram. Uh, so that's Wally Green NYC, of course. Um, but I got some stuff coming out. I got some. Um, you know, I had the New York Times article, you know, Stephen Curry's podcast that I'm on just came out a little while ago. I have MSG, oh, MSG Network stories coming out this month, I think. And Schoolastic. I'm in so, Schoolastic. Can you believe that? So <laughs> one of the things I got to recommend to you. He cheated his whole way through school. <laughs> I know, right? It's Schoolastic. Crazy. One of the one of the things I got to recommend to you is a pop card. You know what the pop card is because you got mine. Because that's oh, how that's yeah, how I can that's cool. So if you go to Pop Popple, Popple is one of our sponsors. So if yeah. you go to popple.com and put in TSP20, the suffering podcast 20, you get a 20% discount. All these little links that you're giving out right now, you can give with a with a tap of a digital business yeah, that, card. That's what you showed me. Yeah. And the big thing is is when they change, they get updated. Yeah, that was really cool, actually. Yeah, I remember that. I was like, whoa, where'd you get this from? Yeah. So go to go to popple.com and you can do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's a that's a really big deal. Wally. I, like I, I'm I'm at a loss for words right now because you're yes. you're pretty you're pretty freaking amazing and I don't mean to to be on your you know <laughs> on, on your pickle <laughs> on your on your pickle ball. <laughs> but w you've lived this life you've gone from here to to here you've been to the top you've been to the bottom and that's why people listen to what you have to say right now is because you come from a place of understanding if you were never in those places in the projects. You think your words would have that big of an impact? No, for sure not. Of course, hundred percent, hundred percent. So this life that you've lived and the suffering that you've gone through to where you are now, what do you think it's taught you? And I mean, honestly, what it's what it's really taught me was that, um, you know, 
everyone's not out to get me. That's the first lesson I ever learned was that, because that's what I thought. Everyone's, everyone's not out to get me, and I'm responsible for my own behavior. And then after that, it's taught me that, you know, that I need, that I need, not want, or I need to tell my story so that I can help other people who's been through it too. So, you know, all, all the crazy stuff that I went through in my life, um, sometimes I think, yeah, man, you know, you went through this, but now you can share with others who are going through this right now and maybe hopefully change their lives before they get into the kind of things that I would have probably gotten to. You, you, you seem like a person. So the first time I met you, I knew who you were and I did not approach you. I kind of stayed away from you because you're, you're, I, again, I just knew who you were. I knew what you've done and I knew what you've been through. I've seen your story and I've seen you on different shows and stuff. So I never came up to you. I was introduced to you through our friend, Chris Kermitzos. And what I found is that person in front of me is not what I thought you were. It's not that I thought you were a bad guy. I yeah, just yeah. thought you, you're who you're not going to talk to me. I don't know who the hell am I, but you're the most approachable nicest person, most giving person that I've met in a very, very long time. And I got it. My hat's off to you. Man. Yeah. I mean, I you know, like I said, easy going, you know, soft spoken, you know, you're funny hair. Yeah. Well, he's, <laughs> tell, he's, a, he's a Bengals fan. Tell, 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 tell that to TikTok. Because TikTok, <laughs> they, <laughs> they'd be like, I got my live band like twice this, this in the last three weeks, one said hateful behavior. I was like, okay. And the other one was like, what was it? It was some other crazy thing. But I'm like, come on, man. I'm the least hateful person <laughs> here, man. And I joke around a lot, you know. No, and I actually love good. your shirt. Problem is me. Yeah, the problem solution is, is we. The solution is we. That's true. And that we're gonna leave great. it with that. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you. Thank I you. Appreciate it. Dude, it was appreciate an absolute pleasure. Thank absolute you. pleasure. That's gonna do it for this episode of the Suffering Podcast. And as always, we talk about what we learned. Don't become what you hate. Keep your humanity. Those little pauses in life are what's essential. It takes that one person to believe in you, but most importantly, small goals can equal big rewards. Yes. And that's going to do it for this episode of The Suffering Podcast, The Suffering of a Ping Pong Pro with our friend Wally Green. Follow Mike on Instagram at Mike underscore Fillets. Follow me at Real Kevin Donaldson. And, of course, follow The Suffering Podcast. Don't forget, you can always listen before you watch. All our episodes will air on Sunday mornings, and you can watch on YouTube on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And that's going to do it for this episode. We'll see you on the next one.